Sit back, relax, and please welcome Susan Wiggins. Good morning, everybody. I am so happy to be here today. How many of you can tell me what an author does? If you know, raise your hand. Everybody know what an author does. Okay, great. You put your hands down. Now I need one person to tell me what an author does. This girl right here. They write books. Correct, they write books. Well, I am a children's author. And one of the books that I wrote is called Suppose at the Supermarket. And this book is a sequel. Does anybody know what a sequel means? If you know and you would like to tell us out loud, raise your hand. Let's see. How about a sequel? What is a sequel? A sequel is a, is a book that is similar to a different book. Good job. Okay. So my first book is called Suppose. And this is a sequel to Suppose. And it's filled with silly sentences. If you like silly sentences, clap your hands as hard as you can. Clap, 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 clap. And as fast as you can. And as fast as you can. If you like rhyming words, Go like this. And stop. Okay. Now, can anybody give me an example of two words that rhyme? Let's see. Okay. Oh, right here. Two words that rhyme. Cat and bat. Anybody else? Now, if you like rhyming silly stories, put your two hands on your shoulders. Okay, if you're ready to listen, you're sitting on your bottom and your hands are in your lap. Now, this is a silly story. So it's okay to laugh out loud. But once I'm ready to read the next page, should you be laughing then? No. Why not? Why not? This girl back here. That's right, because I need to finish the story. But I have to tell you, you really need to pay attention. Because after the rhyme, we're going to play a game. So if you're not paying attention, the game will not be fun, okay? So are you ready to listen? Yes! Yeah. Okay, this is what the book looks like. But we are going to see the pictures and the sentences up here. The first pages of the book often have a dedication. Does anybody know what that word means? A dedication. Okay, this boy right here, you actually, as an author, have the right to dedicate the book to a family or a friend. So I have Dedication by Susan Wigden. This picture book is dedicated to my son, Lee, who had, as an adult, still has my out-of-the-box way of thinking. I have to tell you a little something. When Lee was a very, 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 very tiny little boy, he had a best friend. And his best friend was a tiny, tiny little girl with blonde curls. Guess who his friend was? You'll never believe it. But 
this bread was Mrs. Lens. So I want you to see which which class is Mrs. Lens? Okay, and I know she couldn't be here today. But Mrs. Lenz and my son Lee were really good friends. And I know Mrs. Lenz since she was one. <laughs> one year old. Could you imagine? She hardly talked. But Lee and her would play for hours together. And they were such good friends. So, when Mrs. Lenz realized that I was the children's author, I said, and hey, you're a teacher now? You really grew up? And she said, yes, I grew up. So I said, I would love to come to your school and meet all the children in your school. The olives jumped out of the can and they started their own rock band. <laughs> Suppose the apple wore a wig and did the hula with a fig. <laughs> Suppose the pickles and the fish sat at a table with a knish. <laughs> Suppose the lettuce took off a leaf and put it on the head of a two-pound beef. <laughs> Suppose the pudding had one eye and went to skate with the apple pie. <laughs> Suppose the chicken went for a walk and sat down next to a celery stalk. <laughs> Suppose the potatoes and the peas sang a lullaby to the cheese. <laughs> Suppose a lollipop unwrapped itself and sat with the rye bread on a shelf. <laughs> Suppose the peaches in the can had a mustache like a man. <laughs> Suppose the soup started to skip and held hands with a potato chip. <laughs> Suppose the grapes in the juice drink used the life preserver when they started to sink. <laughs> Suppose the blueberry and banana cake Play a game of golf with a sirloin steak. <laughs> Suppose all these things were true. The supermarket would be a silly view. <laughs> now, this is the last page of the book. And it says something interesting. I wonder if anybody has any idea. It says, now it is your turn to suppose. Have fun while pretending and using your own imagination. What does that mean? Why is this page blank? Who is this for? Let's see. This boy over here. It's for the reader, that's right. And this book is being left in the school for children to read. But maybe, maybe your teachers can make a copy of this page 
And you can illustrate. Does anybody know what illustrate means? What does illustrate mean? Okay. Draw. You can draw your own pictures and write your own lines. How many of you think you would like to do that? You could be an author and an illustrator. Great. So maybe teachers, you can have the children do that, okay? But now, we're going to get into the fun part, the part where we play a game, okay? By the way, this picture here, this is the illustrator. Her name is Corey Colvin, and it says she's a columnist, published author, and illustrator. And she lives with a busy family in the mountains of Colorado. Supposed in the supermarket is the fifth book she has illustrated and has never had so much fun in the aisles of a supermarket. When you boys and girls go shopping next time, do you suppose that you might look at the food and imagine things happening? Do you think you could do that? So you let your mom and your dad, and let's say you see cherries. You can imagine them running down the aisle. So supermarket shopping could be lots of fun if you use your Right, because guess what? You boys and girls have the very best imagination more than adults. That's where I learned all the fun things from working with children for many, many years. Okay, so we're ready to play the game. Are you ready? Yes! Are you really ready? Yes! I can't hear you. Yes! What? Yes! Okay, it sounds like you're ready. Okay, now we're going to find out how many of you are really listening. Bruce, if I can have your help here.